ventricular organs. Let's move on further clockwise and see this structure here. This structure is the pineal gland. This pineal gland is highly vascularized. It has got fenestrated capillaries and it is filled with cells which are known as pinealocytes, which are also known as epiphyseal cells. These pineal gland cells, they release melatonin, which is under the stimulus by the suprachiasmatic nucleus here, and it releases melatonin. This is also a very important circumventricular organ. It is based by CSF inside by means of this process by this recess of the third ventricle called the pineal recess. And this area, it releases this melatonin into the third ventricle, and from there it travels and it is mediated by transites, and the transites then send the impulses to the hypophysis, adenohypophysis. So therefore, this is another important circumventricular organ which is responsible for endocrine control. It is, acts on the pituitary and also acts on other endocrine glands. So the pineal gland, according to many, many different ancient traditions, appears to be the main access point between that astral body and the physical body. It's the physiological center that determines how psychic information gets in. As you can see here, it's in the middle of the brain, and it is shaped like a pine cone. If you look there on the right, that's a drawing of what the pineal gland looks like. It's actually upside down uh, from where it really is in the brain. But it is a small gland. It's about the shape of a pea. It has kind of a reddish, purplish color inside the brain. And there's some interesting things about it because when you look at these ancient traditions, we find many, many different traditions giving pine cone type examples in their literature. Now, first of all, we go to Babylon. Babylon has the legend of the primitive mountain. It is said to be the location on earth where the gods contact humanity. In sculptures of the so-called primitive mountain, it's shaped much like a pine cone or the idea of the pineal gland. When we go into Babylonian art, we see sculptures of the god Tammuz actually holding a pine cone in his hand as if this is a very important tool that he's using in his work, which may well be psychic. In Egypt, we have the Ben-Ben stone. Stones are often used to depict the pineal gland. You can clearly see in this image that the stone is shaped like the pineal gland. There are two serpents coming at it on either side. Those serpents are called the Uraeus, and they represent the Kundalini energy, which is believed to be coming up from the root chakra through the 33 vertebrae into the brain. At number 33, that sounds familiar, 33 vertebrae. Well, one of the things I have in the book is a quotation from Manley Palmer Hall saying that the 33 degrees of Freemasonry actually correspond to the 33 vertebrae in the spine, and that the goal of Masonry is to get the adept to awaken the pineal gland. But as we're going to see, it's not just Masonry that's doing this, it's major world religions of all different varieties. So, so, so excited about this one because um, I've been on this huge kick because I found out just doing some research. Pineal gland, first of all, is if you were to go straight in through your sixth or your crown, or your seventh crown chakra and straight in this way to your sixth chakra and met like right in the middle, you have this teeny tiny little gland like the, the size of a pea and it's shaped like a little pine cone. And um, it's function, as far as I understand it, is um, it connects us to spirituality and it gives us that feeling of connectedness to others. It's like that energy um, connection. And um, when I first started working with energy and I got Reiki the first time, this like, I started having this total crazy buzzing right here. Like it was kind of freaking me out and every time I would do Reiki it was like, and it, it was kind of, it was annoying, it was almost like it hurt or it ached. Anyway. As time went on and I realized what it was, it was kind of the third eye awakening and that pineal gland reawakening and reopening. So that's a really important thing, is to have your, your pineal gland Hi, working. Hi, I'm Ben Thompson and I'm a free citizen of America. And today I have some very important information that I want to get out to you. 
Now, what we're going to talk about today is how to remove fluoride from your body. Now, if any of you are not familiar with fluoride, it is a toxic cocktail, a name for a loose association of, of toxic chemicals, which um, are added, mixed together, or used separately, and usually put in water, and is even used by the dental associations, but not so much because uh, many of them are coming to understand of how bad fluoride is. Now, what does fluoride do? It basically dumbs down your brain. Not only uh, physically, but spiritually as well. It prevents us from attaining to higher thought processes and it makes us lethargic. In the exact center of your brain resides a tiny organ called the pineal gland, about the size and shape of a kernel of corn. According to medical science, the pineal gland is the first gland in your body to be formed and it is clearly distinguishable a mere three weeks after conception. In Western culture, there was a time when doctors were taught that the pineal gland had no useful purpose, a mere vestige of our evolutionary past. However, it was discovered, or more properly, acknowledged, that the pineal gland produced a hormone called melanin. Melanin is a pigment associated with blackness. In the dictionary the meaning for the word black has always been looked upon as purely negative. However, melanin plays multiple life-giving roles in the body. Not only does this amazing hormone counteract stress, minimize symptoms of jet lag and regulate biological rhythms, it may even help protect against cancer, reduce the risk of heart disease, and play a role in how long we live. Blackness may be a blessing and not a curse. The study of melanin may be a key for unlocking the doors of mass enslavement to ignorance. Each step in the production of melanin requires certain nutritional components. Each biochemical reaction in the chain is controlled by a specific enzyme. When all proper elements are available, a considerable amount of melanin is produced. If elements are lacking, less is produced. The more melanin one has, the more frequencies of light rays and other frequencies can be safely absorbed by them. Chemical reactions occur in the melanin molecule which allow it greater energy efficiency, and thus little if any energy is reflected. Those with less melanin reflect more energy away. More than one type of melanin is found in humans, and the more powerful darker types have less sulfur. Zero to 1%, while the lighter types have more sulfur, 9 to 12%. The sulfur content induces mutations which contribute to cancer formation more readily from UV light exposures. An oscillator is a circuit which produces or responds to electromagnetic waves usually within a certain range of frequencies. They respond most strongly to vibrations at their own resonant frequency. Basically, everything in nature is an oscillator and responds to an outer exciter or spark or generator, which many people call God. Many Oscillators respond to light by absorbing and emitting 
specific frequencies. These oscillators can be human cells, plant cells, or other various creations within the vast universe. And all can exhibit quantum states still little understood by top minds of science today. Melanin exhibits varying types of electrical charges and binding properties responsible for its great electromagnetic activities. Melanin responds to light, sound, and electricity, and uses any or all of these as nutrients. It has been shown to convert light energy into sound, and then back into light again. It is involved in all mental and physical activities of people and has been shown to possess semiconductive properties even outside of the body. Thus, melanin can either conduct energy or insulate from it in certain directions as needed by the body for optimal functioning. It has great use in absorbing energy rays of vibration for use within the nervous system. Melanin can be fed by charges from the outer world and use them internally for the body's sustenance. Thus, it is important to get sunlight rays each day, if possible, to recharge the internal systems. Absorption of energy is necessary for electrons to move across the semiconductor melanin molecules. Hence, the dark color of melanin is needed to absorb more energy. With less absorption comes less conductive activity as well. Increased conductivity brings increased sensitivities to electromagnetic worlds of etheric beings. Amazingly, chlorophyll, the green liquid within plants, is a first cousin of melanin. It is good to drink daily or eat in one's food. When a force is applied repeatedly at the same frequency of any system, large amplitude of oscillations occur. This is the phenomenon of Resonance The Earth itself has its own resonant frequency. It has been increasing since the late 1980s and will soon reach a key vibration point of 13. As this occurs, our pineal glands, as long as remaining decalcified, will synchronize with the Earth vibrations. The pineal gland magnetically attracts energy up the spine and can bring one, possibly, to the higher plane of existence. Perhaps our next step of evolution as a species? Purify the heart and find your peace within, as the journey day by day comes closer to an end. One way or another it is inevitable for you. Why not be prepared?